Honestly, this man and I, uh, we share a lot other than the same, you know, style of uh, facial hair and uh, haircut. Um, I'm but, sorry, I'm hiding from my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we share a vision of what housing can look like in East Harlem. Um, I want to thank some people who are in the room, like Jim Ratty, who I am telling you, I am going to adopt this man before this is all done, because this man has become more than a friend. Uh, he's become more of a father figure in my life uh, over the last two months, just able to give me any sage advice I need. So, Jim, thank you so much. I also want to acknowledge friend. my Latino Justice Lead That Has friends who are here, um, the Cup Fellows that are in the room, <laughs> um, and also, you know, someone very special to me who's been working with me for a very long time, uh, Paula Rabot, who's right over here. Uh, she is a retired school teacher who helped me write and pass the law that banned the use of toxic pesticides in New York City parks. And the reason why we did that, before you give a round of applause, the reason we did that was because we discovered that if you lived in the Upper East Side, they didn't use pesticides. But if you went to Thomas Jefferson Park, they sprayed 10 times more pesticides in that park than did any other park oh, right. in Manhattan. That's poisoning our, our kids, that's poisoning our pets, that's poisoning our community. Paula recognized that before anyone else. Paula came to our office, and Paula was the one who pushed us to write that law. And thank you, Paula, for that. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was my kindergarten students who were learning about Best this. Best idea. And he, he will, will work with us practically day and night, not the kids. <laughs> the adults who were working on it for, for a long time, and it was not easy because there were forces working against it. Well, we got it done. We got it done. Unanimous. I also want to thank, uh, you know, my new very good friend, Joe Cruz. I met Joe Cruz a few months ago. Those of you that don't know, Yabe Tequila is made here, or well, sorry, it's made in Mexico, but it's from here, from East Harlem, and Joe has been a huge supporter of me in this campaign. Um, he's also the one who's providing the Yabet tonight, so please make sure you patronize the bar and tip the value of Thank you, Joe. Okay. No, 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 no. He's born and bred here, uh, like a lot of people, so let's talk about why we're here tonight. So, a few months ago, Robert and I had a conversation about what we wanted to see East Harlem become. And the reality is, like he said, East Harlem has been kind of forgotten, right? We forget that a lot of the history that we associate with New York City started here and got here. It was the young lords who started, you know, a revolution here that led to uh, the city providing better sanitation services, not only for East Harlem, but for other impacted communities. This is the birthplace of salsa. This is the birthplace of a lot of the, what we identify as Puerto Rican and Latin culture. It all started here in El Barrio, and then was exported back to our motherland in Puerto Rico. So we forget that history that lives here. My father came here in 1958. He stepped off the boat of uh, Korea as a Korean War veteran and came to East Harlem hoping to provide a better life for himself and three young children that he had, um, you know, my three older siblings. He fought hard and by, you know, by the time 1981 came around, there were eight of us. And he was someone who fought day and night, worked as a <laughs> union uh, electrician, my mom ran a bodega, and their whole view on life was to provide a better life for me and my seven siblings. That led me through a lot. Uh, so I had to deal with uh, not only the loss of those businesses, but we had to live in unstable housing. I grew up in Section 8 housing. It was not easy. Our apartments did not look nice. 
our apartments were always, you know, uh, in need of uh, of repair. We always had to deal with what happens if Section Eight gets cut off. Or what if they lower the uh, the benefits mm -hmm. next month? So I had to deal with all that, and I also had to deal with navigating a failing school system for parents who didn't speak the language. How many of us have that experience, where we were the ones who, at seven or eight or nine years old, were the ones who were translating for our parents, who were, you know, talking to the bank for our parents? That's the kind of, you know, upbringing I had, and that's the, the, the type of experience that allowed me to really fight for those who have been forgotten about. And when I think about East Harlem, that's what I, that's what I want to do. I want to fight for this community because this community has been left out of the conversation for too long, and it doesn't matter who's been shouting from the rooftop, if it's been Robert or it's been other people, um, they've been shouting from as loud as they can, and unfortunately, a lot of times those screams have gone unheard. I want to fight to ensure that we get back the money that we're owed uh, for our public schools. Right now, East Harlem is owed over $60 million in foundation aid, and we got to get that money. We have one of the highest concentrations of NYCHA and public development in the entire city, and unfortunately, when we talk about the $40 billion owed plus in NYCHA capital funding, that impacts our community more than any other community in the city. So I need your help. I need your support. I need you to help me get on that train to Albany so I can go there and fight for you and fight for this community. I am not doing this to be in a record book. I am not doing this because I want to be famous. I can do a hundred other things, but I want to do this. I have a duty and an obligation to fight for this community because this community gave my father its first chance. And that has always been something that has been in the back of my mind is the debt that is owed and I owe it to this community. So I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. And I want to ask two things of you. First, if you have time, if you have an hour, two hours, three hours, if you're like Jim, you have 12 hours. <laughs> volunteer and help this campaign out. You can volunteer to carry a petition. You can volunteer to help me make phone calls. You can volunteer to help me, help me uh, you know, knock on doors. I don't care, you can volunteer to stuff envelopes. Whatever it is, we need your help. This is a people-powered campaign, and we absolutely need that. The second ask that I'm gonna make tonight is, if you can reach into your pockets and pull out your wallet and drop a couple of dollars into the campaign account, that would also help a lot because the reality is that we're up against forces that are trying to make this campaign fail. We are up against big, uh, you know, big uh, consultants out there that are trying to tilt the scales and make this campaign, uh, you know, more hard, more difficult than it needs to be. I need your help with that. Um, at the front of the room, there is a, a QR code. You can, you can snap a picture of it, um, and you can donate through there. You can also donate at uh, lopez4ny.com. What was that? Lopez4ny.com. <laughs> oh, my the third, the, the, the last thing, this is not really asked. This is actually a, a cool uh, idea that uh, Chris LeBron, where's Chris LeBron? Hey. 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 Oh, wait. Uh, Chris LeBron, next uh, assembly member from the 75th. The 75th. All right. All right. All right. Those of you who have Google Chrome on your phone, go to Google Chrome. You can actually do a QR generator. You can do a, a QR code. Go to my website, create your own QR, QR code, and show it to someone. Get someone else in your network to donate to the campaign. That is the way we're gonna do. We're, we're gonna be able to do this. We've been, you know, fighting hard every day since December 16th uh, in this race, and we're gonna continue to fight until June 28th, and then, you know, beyond that. I am incredibly proud to have the support of not only the man on on the left and the man on the right. Uh, we also have the support of Senator Gustavo Rivera, who's not with us Woo! today. He's in Albany. Yeah, you can give it up for Woo! Gustavo. We're going to fight together to ensure that we have universal health care for all New Yorkers. We also have the, uh, the endorsement of an organization that's near and dear in my heart, which is the Working Families Party. So we got and this one's coming out tomorrow, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret today. By the way, for uh, Jeff Colton, this is uh, 
this one's off the record. It's, uh, it's a scoop. It's a scoop. Uh, assists in action, an organization that is member uh, member driven and has members from East Harlem who voted for me to get the endorsement. They will be endorsing me tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> the fight is not over. We, we're still collecting petitions and we're still out there knocking on doors and talking to people. Uh, some people in this room have been out there with me. Leslie was with, uh, with me last week and, uh, and others. Um, we need your help. Please sign up and please help me get to Albany. With that, I'm going to cut it short because my wife's giving me the signal. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and let's let's get on the train to Albany. Yeah! I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to go see the hands <laughs> that's uh, th that's it for the talking program. Let's have some fun. Let's, let's, let's get some food. Let's get some food.